what makes a hero what makes a villain those are two interesting questions considering that a hero saves people and a villain well harms people but what exactly defines them what makes them go this path that's kind of what this episode alludes to the most considering that for a majority of it we're in the vestige world where everything about one for all as well as all for one is discussed here with all the other one for all users what's also interesting about this episode is we get an explanation as to why it was wise not to give Lemillion the quirk as Night Eye had intended rather than Deku considering that everyone in that room that hadn't been hunted down and killed by all for one died by old age and using the wine in a cup thing as an example is more or less the best way of explaining the situation in an easy route as in there's already one quirk it's basically a cup full you add in a second quirk it'll overflow so <laughs> it'll cause them to overflow with power but aside from that note it is interesting to see that all Might does have a vestige there. He had all one for all and made it his own quirk. So in theory, having a version of him in the one for all vestige world is something to that is intriguing. As well as the fact that he can give them information because he has a link to one for all, which seems like an interesting plot line that might be used later. But it's also pretty fun to see that, yeah, he's basically giving them information which allows them to better assist Deku. Because now they're talking to Deku because as more people keep getting quirks and non-quirk people or quirkless people are starting to dwindle in numbers, eventually there'll be no way that anyone can get one for all without the risk of dying early. So having Deku be the final one mostly implies that he has to be the one to beat all for one which i like give the main character the big drive to be the one to defeat all for one now i did wanted to put note in this part all for one it, uh, he's a menace yes he's the guy who refuses to fucking die but i will say He's kind of an annoying villain. He's just a typical villain that keeps coming back and can't learn his goddamn lesson. And it kind of sucks because his introduction is badass as the big threat, only to now see that he's failed so many times. It's almost baffling how, how much of a non-threat he can really be. But we all know the main conflict is going to be Deku versus Shigaraki. And then there's the next point. Will Deku kill Shigaraki? And then he starts, Deku starts thinking, well, I don't know why these people turn to villainy. All, you've, all he's done is beat the crap out of them. Not really trying to get an understanding like he did with Gentle. Gentle is probably the best arc in terms of Deku somewhat fighting a villain, but not because he wants to beat them up. Well, that, but he also manages to get through to them. If one can understand your opponent, you can possibly get through to them. That's what makes this an interesting case. It's motivation. Everyone has a motivation. All Might had the motivation of wanting to keep everyone smiling and everyone safe, which was his driving force of a hero. Deku at first wanted to be like All Might, but it seems like he's finally carving his own path. Now, in the little bit at the end, we do have the conference with a weird looking S genius, which, I don't know, his neck looks fucking weird. Uh, we have an injured Hawks and Endeavor all there, obviously the media giving them shit. Hell, even <laughs> Endeavor's like, I mean, you got, if we beg her and cry our eyes out of forgiveness, are you going to forgive? And the report's like, no, it's like, yeah, nothing's going to please you assholes. So all they can do is just be a hero. So that's what Endeavor once again says, look at me. The first time he said is, look at me, I'll be the number one hero. That was back in season three. Now in season six, <laughs> three seasons later, we have him say, look at me, I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna atone, which is kind of badass. And then we get to the moment that finally kicks off the Vigilante Deku arc. Deku leaving UA, something he cares about. 
all because he doesn't want his friends getting hurt. He knows All For One's gonna use his friends against him. He's gonna try to hurt them just to get through, get him mad, like how Bakugo got hurt. It's noble, but <laughs> Class 1A has gone through so much shit, they're not gonna let Deku, of all people, handle things alone. Hell, Uraraka is kind of the best example of a hero that needs to be there for the heroes because if the heroes are saving people who's gonna save them from themselves hell i like that night i was up here for a moment but it's actually very symbolic in a different sense because night Eye has been trying to be there for all might and all might refused it and look what happened all might was alone so deku is gonna end up in that same path so class 1a's goal now is to save deku which is what the opening kind of alludes to the most Overall, very amazing episode. Can't wait for the next one because it'll be one hell of a fight. A rematch, if I could say anything about it.